Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session, we have seen the snooping based protocol. So in this session, we are going to talk about the directory based cache coherency protocol. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Now directory based protocol is especially designed for distributed systems involving multiple nodes which communicate using an interconnection network. However, before diving straight into it, let's understand the drawback associated with the snooping based protocol. If you remember our discussion of snooping based protocol, there all the different processors are connected using the shared bus. And all the requests there were broadcast requests. This is feasible for a system with less number of processors. Now why is so? Consider a system with n number of processors and suppose n happens to be a very large number. In that situation, just think about the overwhelming number of broadcast requests that would be placed on the single shared bus. This will lead to bus contention, that is, more than one processor will place their respective requests on the bus at the same time resulting in a bottleneck. So we opt for directory based protocol. However, I must inform you that directory based protocol emerged before the snooping based protocol. Now let's try to understand the organization of directory based protocol and thereafter we will observe its working principle. Now I already mentioned that directory based protocol is actually meant for distributed systems. We are talking about individual workstations. That means the workstations will not only have the processors and their caches, they will also have their own memories and individual directories will be associated with each one of them. Now these are the nodes I had been referring to for so long. And as mentioned earlier, these nodes are connected using a scalable interconnection network. And due to this organization, we will now have a point to point communication between every other node. So no broadcast messages and since there is no shared bus, thus no bus contention. And that is the beauty of this organization. Now suppose P1 wants to access A and A is sitting in the memory of P3. Now P1 will come to know about A's location from the centralized directory which is in the network and which can be accessed through the NIC or the network interface card of this particular node. At this point, since no other node is accessing A, P1 will send a point to point request to P3 for A and P3 will respond back to P1 sending it a copy of A. Now P1 has A in its private cache. However, while responding, P3 will simultaneously update its directory with the coherence information of A being in the shared state. Also, it will retain the processor information which is sharing A. Suppose at this point, P3 also wants to access A. Now since in P3's directory, A is in shared state, that means, P3 can also have A in its private cache. Nonetheless, in the directory along with P1, now P3 will also be enlisted as a sharer of A. Now if P3 wants to update the value of A, it will first check its directory to know who else has the copy of A. Since P1 also has A in its cache, P3 will now ask P1 to invalidate its copy. Listening to this request, P1 will first invalidate its copy as it was only reading the value of A so far and then send an acknowledgement back to P3. At this point in the directory, the sharer list will also be updated indicating that now only P3 is accessing A. Now P3 can update A. And once it does so, the directory will update the coherence information of A promoting it from shared state to modified state. Now this updated value of A will have to be propagated to the memory as well. So if we are using write through strategy, the updation will be propagated right away. Otherwise, in case of write back, the updation will be reflected in the memory during the next cache replacement. Anyway, whenever that happens, in the directory, the coherence information of A will be updated, demoting it from modified to shared state. Moreover, since P3 still has A in its cache, in the list of sharer, P3's info will still be retained. 
Now during this entire process, P2 and P4 will be unaware of the whole situation because the communication between P1 and P3 is done using point-to-point -point messages. Therefore, no snooping whatsoever. Isn't it cool? Now suppose at this particular instance, P1 wants to operate on A. If you observe closely, P1 does have a copy of A in its cache, but it's invalid. So P1 won't be able to use the copy of A present in its cache, and as a result, it will be considered as a miss. And this type of misses are known as coverage miss. So this is basically the organization and the working principle of directory-based cache coherence protocol. Alright folks, that will be all for this session. Now with this, we have come to an end of the series of discussions involving cache memory. I hope this series was useful to you. From the next session onwards, we will get into the detailed discussions of primary memory. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.